Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and the wait for Godot, specifically Godot 4.5, just became one tiny step smaller because Godot 4.5 Dev 2 was just released. Now Dev 1, Dev 2, these are basically small micro-releases leading up to the beta. They start adding new features that we can expect to see in the Godot 4.5 release, assuming they make it through. We already covered 4.5. Five, uh, Dev 1 release. What we had there was uh, the ability to mute games and multiple selections inside of the game preview window. We had the new collision system, which enabled you to put all of the tile collisions instead of having multiple collisions per tile. You can have just one giant collision map for the tile. Should be a great performance optimization. And we also got the ability to drag and drop resource UID. So there's not a ton in these particular releases, but there's definitely uh, some nice new features and it gives us some insight into what to expect with the next release. Well, good news is Godot 4.5 Dev 1 is now released. Sorry, Dev 2. So if you want to go ahead and check this one out, it's available on the home screen. Let's head on over here. Again, this is the 4.5 Dev 2 release. We'll come back to the release notes in just a second. I'm going to give you a quick hands-on with a couple of the changes, but the downloads are all available over here. So let's go ahead on over to the Dev 4.2 release. So Dev 2. To go ahead and create our project. So again, this is 4.5 Dev 2 of Godot. So this is what we can expect in the next version of Godot. Again, there's not a ton in this release, but I do want you to be aware of what's out there. So a couple things. First one is this one. So the shader editor just got a bit of a reorg. It's nothing, you know, groundbreaking, not a massive change, but a couple things you're going to notice. First off, the file menu is always here. So that's nice because if you want to go ahead and start things off, you can do so. So let's go ahead and fire up a new shader. Another thing I want you to notice is this little button right here. So if you want to float the editor, it's available there. And notice the lack of help. So there's no help menu over anymore. What you do, create your new shader like so. Uh, and then once you've created it, you will notice just to stay consistent with other editors, such as the script editor, you'll notice this online docs open link is now here. Uh, so it's the same way as it used to be. So instead of being the help menu, it's just consistent design to the rest of the editor. Pretty straightforward. Again, we got a bit of a reorg, so now it's not just the file menu here. We've got all the other options in there. So a bit of a reorganization of how the shader window works. Uh, this goes along with, once again, so let's go ahead and add a script up here. So let's attach a script to here. Uh, sure. So you'll notice, again, script. You've got the docking window, floating window over here, your online docs, online docs. So it's going to make it consistent across the board. Another thing you're going to notice is if you start coding, what you'll notice here is navigation has, there's a 2D, oh, so navigation, sorry, server. So what you're going to notice is it used to be navigation server, and now there's navigation server 2D and 3D. And it used to be in the past that navigation server 2D was actually navigation server 3D uh, with some, like, fakery going on in front of it. So this means you had a bunch of 3D crap in your navigation that you didn't need if you were working with 2D. So they've split the servers out, so you now have these two different options. It's a nice uh, change there. I think it took a, quite a bit behind the scenes to make that one happen. Uh, but again, splitting it out so you don't have a bunch of cruft and it doesn't add size if you don't need it. Uh, on top of that, we have one other change here. So I go into the editor settings, so over here. And what you're going to notice is with languages, so now you can actually change out your language. Again, this is pretty damn niche. Uh, but if you want to have a different language, so for example, French, boom, automatically does it. And you don't need to do a restart for it to take effect. It starts immediately. So if you actually come up here and pick a right to left, so uh, like Arabic, so you see there, uh, it will automatically just flip in. Uh, so even if it's the opposite direction, uh, it will do so and switch it and everything changes on the fly. So no need to restart to get things switched out. And now I'm going to change this back because I am never going to be able to get back to this menu if I do not do so. So where is the English? Where is English? Oh, English at the top. All right, there we go. So uh, you can now uh, change it. Now, there is still a message here saying that uh, it needs to be restarted for the effects to take change. Uh, and that's obviously not true because you can see it updating on the fly. So I think that message just needs to be taken out. So those are some of the highlight features of Dev2. Again, these are just some of the features that are going to ultimately be in Godot 4.5. So you don't expect, like, you know, earth-shattering new stuff with each one of these new releases. So here we are back on the release notes about details. Of course, you're also getting a bunch of bug fixes and so on here, but the highlights of this release, once again, the new dedicated 2D nav server. So it was split out from 3D. Uh, so this is going to get rid of a lot of the, um, the cruft that you don't necessarily need. You're used to get a bunch of 3D settings and features that would never have any use, but would absolutely see a bump in the output size as a result. So for having a dedicated 2D one and a 3D one, if you're using just 2D, it 
which should make the world a better place. Again, we saw this one in action, a reorg to the shader editor UI, like the file menu always being there, the online docs being consistent with where they are in the script editor and so on. Um, again, just a, a make lift for, uh, I'm sorry, a facelift for the editor. Uh, so it got a more consistent user experience. And uh, then we got change to the editor language without a restart. We saw that in action as well. And then other changes, these, there's two more pretty big behind the scenes changes. Uh, one is Wayland. Wayland is the alternative um, windowing system for X11 on Linux machines. It's been taking over the world for about a dozen years now, so it's been taking over the Linux world very slowly, uh, but now there's better support here because it supports uh, sub-windows. So there was a lack of native sub-window support, so they've got around that. Uh, but it is it was a requirement for supporting the embedded game window on Wayland. Uh, so we got this new game preview uh, in 4.4. So they got this game preview window right here. Uh, you can have it float and not float. And in order to have it not be embedded, Wayland needed this update. So that's definitely a nice improvement there. And it should bring Wayland pretty much on par with X11 for feature set. So if you're in Linux world wanting to use Wayland, you should like that. And then finally, we have this one, which is the fragment density map support. Now, this is used for VR. And basically, uh, if you have a VR device, you probably notice that the top right, top left, bottom right, bottom left corners of your screen are a little bit blurry just because of the way that the lenses work. So people take advantage of that and they basically optimize towards showing you and spending the time on the stuff that's directly at the middle of your vision because the stuff off to the periphery, well, you can't see it anyways because of distortion from the way that lenses work. Uh, so this is an optimization trick to handle that. Uh, here they're calling it uh, the fragment density map support. Uh, so I already had support for Vulkan uh, Fragment shader Shading Rate extension to render outside of the viewport at a lower resolution, leading to performance improvements with little noticeable decrease in quality. However, on standard VR headsets like the MetaQuest, this extension isn't supported or doesn't provide as big a performance improvement as the Vulkan Fragment Density Map extension. So they have implemented this Fragment Density Map for uh, Vulkan Mobile for VR headsets. Now, what I'm finding a little bit confusing here, and I'm not sure if it's just a naming convention thing, I always thought that this was referred to as foveated rendering. So, and Unity has a feature like this. I think Unreal has a feature like this as well. And they call it foveated rendering support. Here it's called fragmented, uh, fragment density map support. I'm not sure if this is the exact same thing, just a different terminology for it. If you know the difference, do let me know in the comments down below. And then we have a bunch of uh, smaller fixes and changes and improvements across the version. Like, so. Here you go, see everything that was there. Uh, and if you want, there's the interactive change log that shows all of the actual changes that are in this release from dev one to dev two. So beyond like the marquee features that I've highlighted to you in this video, there's a number of other improvements here as well. So uh, between dev one and dev two, some nice new features coming. Again, it's shaping up to be a pretty solid release. Nothing, you know, monumental in this particular release, especially from a demonstration point of view, but all improvements. And let me know if there's something here that you like the look of. Are you looking forward to Godot 4.5? I gotta say 4.4 was, again, probably my favorite release yet. So uh, I do like the way they're going. And I like this open development. And I like this dev releases. I think it's cool. And also gives me a lot of videos that I can make, which I always appreciate. So let me know what you think of Godot 4.5 dev 2 release. And I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.